The modern naval supply activity is faced constantly with the complex problem of handling materials. Whether it's raw materials, food, general supplies, materials of every conceivable kind, size and weight must be moved about every working day and night. Yet specially designed machines in the hands of skilled operators make it possible to handle the Navy's vast array of materials with speed and dispatch. And whether it's receiving and unloading, or hauling, or storing, or delivering for shipment, the men and their machines do the job with really remarkable efficiency and safety. This film is designed to help you acquire similar skill with three of the most common materials handling machines. The hand pallet truck, the tractor-trailer train, and the forklift truck. By showing what to use them for, how to use them properly, and how to use them safely. First, we will see what to use them for. You use the hand pallet truck to haul material short distances, as from a packing area to a nearby loading platform. It is not used to move material vertically. The hand truck can be maneuvered easily, so it's used handily in congested areas and inside freight cars and highway trailers, wherever there's a short haul. But for long hauls, the tractor-trailer train is used. Tractors are generally electric-powered for inside use and gasoline-powered for outside use. Either can haul as many as five loaded trailers. Like the hand pallet truck, the tractor train cannot move material vertically. To move loads vertically, you use the forklift truck. These also are electric or gasoline powered and can work stacks as high as 20 feet. A skilled operator can take his forklift truck practically anywhere and can spot his load practically any place. In addition to moving materials vertically, forklift trucks are used to haul loads for distances as great as 200 feet but it's in stacking and tiering of material that they're most useful. How to use them properly. To take on a load, spot your truck in correct position in front of the pallet. The forks parallel with the sides of the pallet in a position to enter between the deck boards equidistant from the center stringer. Put the forks in so the load will rest snugly. Now raise the forks. When you've checked the load to see it's secure, you're ready for the haul. Make your start smooth. Sudden starts may unseat the load. In narrow aisles, guide your truck by watching one side only. Don't worry about the other side. It'll take care of itself. Easy does it on turns. Slow down and make as wide a turn as you can. It's easier to judge distances in a wide swing and there's less chance of hitting the corner stack. At the end of the haul, learn to spot your load just where you want it without wasting time and power backing and filling. To unload, just lower the forks and move the truck away. But move away in a straight line so the forks won't gouge the sides of the pallet. Loading a tractor-trailer train, so far as the tractor operator is concerned, is largely a matter of coupling the trailers in the proper manner. The actual loading of each trailer is done by forklift trucks or other machines. To couple a trailer, back your tractor up slowly 
and in a straight line. Learn to do this, as well as all other maneuvers, without wasted motion and without riding the clutch. Before starting the haul, check all the couplers. Make sure each load is secure and that no trailer is overloaded. An overload will make a smooth start difficult and may unseat the load. Get off to a smooth, gradual start. The tractor wheels should never slip. The trailer coupled to the tractor must have a low load so the operator can see to the rear. Also, if a light trailer is to be hauled with loaded trailers, always put the light trailer at the end of the train. Your main problems during the haul are to keep packages on the trailers and to keep the trailers coupled. Avoid holes or other rough spots that can jostle packages and uncouple your trailers. Make all stops and starts as smoothly as you can. and take your train over railroad tracks practically at a crawl. Divide your time between looking forward to guide your train and looking backward to watch your load. It's like they tell airplane pilots. Keep your head and eyes moving. Keep to the right. The high point or crown in the center of the road will slew your trailers about. Turning your trailer calls for skill. Remember this. Each trailer will cut the corner more closely than the trailer ahead of it. Make a wide turn like this. Approach all corners with caution. Then swing out into the center of the road or the aisle if you're driving indoors. Now your tractor will make a wide enough swing for the last trailer to have plenty of room to clear the corner. Never try to haul more than five trailers at one time, whether they're loaded or light. And if you're going over a ramp, never haul more than five light trailers or two loaded trailers at one time. When you're about to take a train up or down a ramp, stop and shift into low gear and wait until the last trailer has cleared the ramp before shifting into a higher gear. At the end of the haul, you must spot your train just where you want it on the first try. You simply can't back up a tractor-trailer train successfully. Spot your train to one side so other traffic can get by. You don't have to worry about unloading the trailer, so just uncouple the tractor and get on to your next haul. The fork truck, when not in use, is parked with the forks resting on the deck. You raise the forks four to six inches from the deck and tilt the mast slightly backward. This is the correct position for the forks when the truck is to be moved, whether it's empty or loaded. Now spot your truck in the correct position in front of the stack. Raise the forks to pallet height and straighten the mast. The proper position of the forks for loading is the same as for the forks of the hand pallet truck. Parallel with the sides of the pallet, level with it and equidistant from the center stringer. Now move the truck forward until the forks are all the way in and the load is seated in the heel of the forks. Raise the forks so the pallet can clear the stack. 
tilt the mast back. If the rear feels light, the truck is overloaded. Before starting the haul, see that the load is secure. Then move the truck away. Lower the load to a point four to six inches from the deck. Never move your truck more than a few feet with the load elevated. If your load is so high you can't see ahead of you, travel in reverse. You won't lose any time. A forklift truck can go just as fast in reverse as forward. If you drive down a bridge plate, drive in reverse. By following this rule, the forks of your truck won't dig into the car floor as the truck tips forward going down the plate. In all such cases, drive in low gear. After loading, come out going forward if you must drive up. Entering a freight car, going up a ramp, drive your truck forward. But come out in reverse if you have to go down. This will keep your load from slipping off the forks. When you're working inside a freight car or highway van, watch your overhead clearance as you raise the forks. Once you're underway with your haul, keep both hands on the steering wheel. In narrow spaces, guide your truck by watching one side only. Since the seats of trucks like this are on the left side, Line up the left front, then the left rear. Don't worry about the other side. Of course, if the seat of your truck is on the right side, as it is on some trucks, guide by the right side. In making turns, Go into low gear and swing as wide as you can. Take it easy, because a fork truck is apt to make a sharper swing than you expect. A wide, slow turn is the best way to avoid bumping corner stacks. As with a bridge plate, you go down a ramp in reverse. and you go up a ramp going forward. Guide your truck by watching the front drive wheel on the inside of the turn. Coast in with clutch disengaged. When you approach a stack to unload, bring your truck into position in one accurate motion. Skill in this operation will save you time and avoid wasted motion. Use the brakes to stop. Swing your truck toward the nearby stack. This way, you won't have any waste space between pallets. Again, come in, clutch disengaged. Swing toward the nearby stack. Watch front wheel on inside of turn. Spot your truck without backing and filling. To unload, raise the forks a little above stack height. Move the truck forward. Lower the load about four inches from surface. Then straighten the mast. Lower the load the rest of the way and back off. Remember, lower, straighten mast, and lower rest of way. How to use them safely.
Using your machine for the right job and using your machine right are mighty important. And using your machine safely is equally important. In general, the same safety rules apply to the hand pallet truck, the forklift truck, and the tractor trailer train. Safety starts with a safe machine. So check it carefully at the start of a shift and after lunch. Check the oil, water, and gasoline. Check the fire extinguisher. Check the brakes and all controls. Get rid of excelsior, paper, rags. If you find anything wrong during a check, tell your supervisor. He will have a skilled mechanic make all repairs for you. Know the official capacity of your machine and learn the weight of various materials. Overloads are dangerous to you. Use your machine only for its intended purpose. A tractor is for hauling, not pushing. And thumbs down to guys like this, too. Your machine was made for hauling material, not people. When handling high loads, watch out for people underneath. When underway with a haul, keep to the right. Take those traffic signs seriously. They're posted to protect your neck. Stay three lengths behind the machine in front of you. Never pass on a ramp and always use low gear on ramps and bridge plates as well as at corners and intersections. Come to a complete stop before entering or leaving buildings. Use your horn and hand signals where necessary. When you're working a freight car or highway van, always inspect the bridge plate before driving over it. Be sure it's wide enough for your machine and be sure it's securely anchored. At the end of a haul, warn others to stand clear as you come in to spot your load. You have seen the basic principles of efficient and safe operation of your materials handling equipment. Remember these principles. For the successful functioning of your naval supply activity largely depends on you and your machines.